Thanks, Coach, for joining me. As always, appreciate it. Uh, Obviously, off to an 0-2 start, but we got the Hoopsville Classic coming up. Let's start with the Hoopsville Classic, fourth annual year. This is certainly getting a lot of fun. Eight teams this year, four of them nationally ranked, six of them getting votes, and all eight somehow, in some way, played postseason last year. Well, first, uh, I think I'm making history. Probably the first guy on your show that's 0-2 <laughs> to start a season. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, I have to go back and check the records. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we're excited about the Hoopsville Classic. It's uh, another outstanding field. and. Um, uh, it's going to be outstanding uh, student athletes, players, um, great, great opportunity to uh, get a uh, barometer on the conference and uh, barometer on the nation. People in Division Three will appreciate it, maybe not outside, but six of the eight regions represented. We have, what, five or six conferences represented, maybe more, I can't remember off the top of my head. Really diverse field this year, and interesting enough, six of the eight haven't played in the tournament before. Yeah, a lot of cross-section matchups that are really intriguing. Um, I, I think it offers um, everything. There's going to be different uh, paces of play. Uh, you're going to see people extend uh, full court. You're going to see some people that are really, really good in the half court. Um, should be interesting. And it's funny because sometimes we'll, you and I will have a 2 or 4 o'clock game where it's like, okay, that's an interesting one, but you know, nothing major of note. Every single game has a major note of some kind involved. St. John Fisher, a deep team that went into the tournament last year. You also have a, a, other teams like Southern Vermont who are going to make names. It, the, every game's got something fascinating. It does, um, and I, I think that's excellent, not only for – uh, the participants and, and the people that are watching here in the facility, but uh, nationally, anybody that tunes in is going to get a chance to see some really, really intriguing matchups. You got Dickinson in the first game, and then you're going to take on Emory in the in the second day. Nice little mix there. You get a local team that you don't necessarily play all the time, and then you're going to get that UAA team that you certainly love, but also a national power to test yourself against. What are you expecting from the weekend? Well, um, we're hoping to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, count the guys at the end of it, and hopefully we have the same number of guys entering. But it's going to be uh, um, good for our program. It's it's always good to play really, really stiff competition because that certainly shows you uh, the things that you're doing well and also highlights the things that you've got to continue to work on. We'll transition into your team in a minute, but I know you always want to give Stevenson and those back here at the school who do a lot of work uh, recognition. Can you talk a little bit about how this gets put behind the scenes? Not not you and I necessarily, but those behind the scenes at Stevenson who do the work. Well, I think the entire campus embraces it. Uh, the community uh, really uh, works hard to make this an outstanding event. Um, uh, this this not only in our office, but it touches the entire campus. Uh, Glenda Legendre, her office in uh, PR is outstanding for us and promotes it. Uh, uh, for months on end. Uh, and then in-house, uh, Melissa Button is one that works tirelessly at this, and, and there are others. Mike Goldinghurst, uh, uh, Brad Adams, our athletic director, certainly um, uh, has a, uh, a lot to do with uh, the success of the tournament. And then uh, it starts at the top with uh, President Manning and, um, and uh, Tim Campbell, our uh, vice president. So um, it, uh, it's a family affair. It's uh, one that uh, we take very, very seriously, and uh, we hope that it comes off well. Even translating to other sports, men's lacrosse, kind of a similar structure in the middle of their season, bringing in good teams teams and doing something it's almost set a, a standard as it were what's really interesting is you know I know what I hear from coaches outside but what do you hear about tournaments like these and not just the Hoopsville Classic but any tournament that can bring in really good talent uh, to test people what do you hear about those at the beginning of the season and specifically this one well it offers so much uh, for the participants it offers an opportunity to um, like I said, play good competition. It might be out of your region or out of your geographical area. So that's um, it's always good to do that because you hear about good play, uh, but you don't necessarily know how good that play is. So uh, that eliminates that because, because it's face-to-face -face competition. Uh, the other thing that uh, I think the Hoopsville Classic does is it uh, promotes Division Three basketball nationally. And uh, we've got an excellent product. We've got so many really, really quality teams across the country. Uh, this is one of the events that um, highlights that. There are others, but uh, we feel like we kick it off with, uh, with a really good tournament. When you look at the fact that you do have that national scope and you're testing yourself early, I've heard coaches say this, but I don't, maybe I don't truly understand it. They'll say, hey, listen, I can tap into that tournament come March. I can turn to my guys and say, hey, you remember X, well, they're like Y. How does that imply? I mean, you obviously, you've played a lot of ECA season, you've, played, you've tried to get in the NCAA tournaments, and you've got big games at the end of your conference season. How does a tournament here in November 
help you in February and even March? Well, you know you're playing uh, against competition that could compete in your conference and could compete at the top of your conference. So uh, that's invaluable uh, because if you can handle uh, that level of competition, then you know you can go back in in January and February and compete uh, effectively. So. Um, Again, uh, some coaches uh, uh, don't want that type of stiff competition this early in the season. They want to work out some of the kinks uh, before they uh, see a, a program of the magnitude that we have here. Uh, but um, for those that are wishing to uh, um, judge themselves nationally and, and try to figure out where they are in the pecking order, uh, it certainly gives some insight into that. Interestingly, too, is you know we've been kind of the second week of the of the season, so people can kind of get the kinks out as you were say. But in the next three years, should this continue? Obviously, we're dealing with the first weekend, almost almost the first couple of days, because there's not much time before Thanksgiving. We we hope to keep it on that same weekend. That's going to make it challenging for coaches down the road too. Yeah, originally um, in thinking about this tournament and, and not ever putting on something of this uh, scope. Um, I didn't know exactly what went into this. This is a year-round endeavor, <laughs> and, um, and there are a lot of complexities. You mentioned one uh, with the calendar the next three years. That presents some unique challenges. Uh, but all in all, it seems to come together, yeah. and uh, I'm thankful for the help that you provide and everybody else um, in, in working, like I said, year-round to uh, really get uh, the culmination of what we'll see this weekend. This uh, interview is also part of our Coach's Corner, but presented by Buffalo Wild Wings uh, here at the tournament weekend. So let's talk a little bit about your team, slide into that role. Tough start to the season, 0-2. Uh, last year's five-win team, York, and last year's four-win team, Goucher. Both got you here at home. I got to see part of that Goucher game. Seems like you guys are just trying to work out a little bit of the kinks. Yeah, yeah, we got beat by two teams that are better than us. Uh, there's no question about that, and, and uh, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got... Uh, um, uh, you know, some deficiencies right now on, on both sides of the ball. So uh, we're getting after that in practice, and uh, we don't have a lot of time to shore that up. The schedule is very, very rigorous, and then we get into conference play, which is always difficult. So uh, we certainly have our work cut out for us. Talk about conference play in a minute, but I find your out-of-conference schedule fascinating this year. You're tapped into about eight or so conferences off the top of my head. I know you're into the Landmark, the CAC. You're tapping into the Centennial, the UAA, um, amongst others, Cabrini, CSAC, et cetera. You really diversified your your schedule this year and really wanted to tap into a lot. Is that almost, not to put you on the spot, but is that almost an SOS type game? Well, uh, you know, a lot of things go into that. I'm a California guy, so I'm still trying to get uh, the lay of the You're land. You're not used to this many teams in the area. You know, <laughs> yeah, and so I, I, I like to uh, go see different places, sure. and, and I know that our guys like that too. And um, so it, it kind of all came together. We had an opportunity to play uh, um, some really, really good people in some interesting places, and we, and we jumped at it. Now, you'll go to Christopher Newport, I know, at one point. The other tournament, was it Rochester? Or? We're going to Miami. Miami, I'm sorry, that's right. Um, think of the women's team is going to Rochester. Yeah. Um, you're, you're, and you're picking out some talent there, too. You're really, you know, it's across the board. It seems like this is almost an educational year, should you even make the NCAA tournament, which is obviously the goal. But this seems like an educational year. This is a type of team we should see. This is a type of team we should see. Yeah, we'll learn a lot about uh, not only ourselves, but we'll learn a lot about uh, uh, NCAA tournament type programs uh, moving through um, our preseason. We've got some uh, uh, people that are historically um, participated in postseason play. So, uh, again, I, I think that's good for us. I think it's healthy for our program. Uh, certainly sounded really uh, fun uh, when we put it together. Now, now that we start to look at it uh, and you get some film coming in, yeah. uh, not so good. Hey, it's a great schedule right, on right, paper. Right, on paper, it's right. a great schedule. But, but I think you've got to go play people. And sure. We've never been afraid to play people, and, and uh, we'll live with the outcome. But uh, uh, to be able to participate against really good competition uh, helps us. It helps us in the recruiting and helps us in the development of our student athletes. Matt Commonwealth. Interesting. They all voted you to finish first. You guys have been in the championship game the last two years, obviously, to be surprised by Alvernia. But it's a close vote. There's a lot of teams in the mix. It's interesting. The Commonwealth seems deep, but it doesn't feel as top-heavy as it has been. There's been talk that Messiah is good, and they may be. There's been talk that, you know, Alvernia may have rebuilt again. Arcadia is in the mix. You don't know what to expect from Lebanon Valley. Widener may be a better squad than in the past. It, it feels like the conference is wide open this season. Well, it's always challenging, yeah. and, uh, and I expect uh, this to be no different. Um, 
you know, when you voted at the top of the conference, I told somebody the other day, it's like uh, having a 40-inch waist and you have 32-inch pants. It really means nothing, you know. You can, so you've got to go prove yourself. It's one of the things I really love about sport that you have to actually go do it uh, over a double round robin. Yeah. So uh, uh, everybody has the same challenge and uh, you know, has terrific coaching in, in the in the conference, so you know everybody's going to be prepared, and there's some really, really talented student athletes. So it'll be it'll be difficult to uh, for anybody to, to win our conference, and uh, and I don't think uh, that's usually the mantra every year, and it didn't change obviously sure. this year. Interesting quirk with the schedule. You'll start off actually with a bunch of road games in the conference, which contributes with your other part of the schedule. That after the Hoopsville Classic, you will not be home until January 2nd with a game. You're going a solid what five six weeks there without a home game. Certainly a challenge, but is that something that, I mean, obviously it'll benefit you later. You'll have a ton of home games near the end of the season, but is that something that you can take advantage of, or is that something that's almost a double-edged sword? Well, I, I feel a little bit like a community organizer. You know, it, it, um, <laughs> our commissioner came to, to me and said that we got a little bit of a challenge with the schedule, and if it's possible, could you play three on the road to start the conference? And, and, um, and obviously, if it's the best for the conference, uh, we're going to do that. Sure. You have to play everybody anyway, yeah. and that's the way it lined up. And, and uh, so we'll go play it. Obviously, it doesn't matter in our conference when you play somebody on the road. Yeah. It's going to be challenging. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, and you've got to do it. Uh, so, so we'll uh, we'll navigate through that and and, um, and and then see where we are after it. But before you booked the Christopher Newport trip and before you booked the Miami trip, did you know you were going to be going on the road? I mean, did you kind of see this long stretch of road games kind of coming? Well, well, I knew that the conference slate was right. uh, set up that way, and uh, but uh, you know, Dave, uh, I can still defect, you know? <laughs> uh, and Miami's a great place to do it. A lot of sunshine there and everything. So, oh, that's why so, you're going right, down there. Right. Okay. So we'll see how that turns out. Right before Christmas, yeah, exactly. too. Perfectly so, yeah, appropriate yeah, you're for you. Starting yourself. to figure out my plan. Yeah. <laughs> that's perfect. Right. Well, good luck with it. I'll, right. We'll see if you're back on January right. 2nd for Thank the you. conference game. Yeah. yeah. Well, Coach, I appreciate it as always coming on. Really looking forward to A to the Hoopsville Classic and looking forward to senior season, as always. And, of course, the battle in the MAC Commonwealth. As always, as you know, we always give the coach the final word. Any final thoughts you want to share with those who may be tuning in? Yeah, if uh, you're able to, to uh, get in a car and drive down, uh, it's an outstanding tournament. And I think uh, um, you'll uh, in enjoy everything about the tournament. Um, we certainly work really hard to make it fan friendly as well. Um, we're teaming up this year with uh, an organization called Team Up for One. A uh, fabulous organization that uh, works with uh, children with a variety of different disabilities and, and uh, challenges and um, chronic illnesses. And, and uh, so, um, if you get a chance, if you're in the building, or if you, you don't, if you can go on their website and learn a lot about them, um, we uh, have partnered with them as well. So it's a uh, it's a great opportunity for. Uh, uh, Division three basketball, I think, this weekend, and I hope that um, if you're not able to come, you can tune in. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and we'll look forward to it. Thank you, Dave. All right.